All right, back on the Young Turks. Now I'm going to talk to Dr. Eric Hazeltine. He is the author of Long Fuse, Big Bang, Achieving Long-Term Success Through Daily Victories. He was also the Associate Director of National Intelligence and Chief Tech Officer for the Intelligence Committee under General Michael Hayden. Uh, Dr. Hazeltine, welcome to the Young Turks. Good to be here. Uh, good to have you. Before we get to your book, I'm curious about this, uh, the fact that you were the Associate Director for National Intelligence. Did you participate in the warrantless wiretapping program? No. No, I didn't. Um, and how did you manage to avoid that, given that that was what was going on at the time? Well, I was at NSA. I was associate director there in charge of research and development. So our job was to invent new technology. We weren't into operations. So I rarely got involved in operations. Okay. And um, all right. And did you know it was happening at the time? Boy, you know, we're getting into areas I just can't talk about. Oh, you I'm can't sorry. talk about I, I know you hate to hear that, but I just can't comment on that kind of stuff. Okay. Um, because the only reason I bring it up is because you're on the show, and uh, warrantless wiretapping is egregious, uh, one of the worst things our government has done, whether it was under Bush or under Obama. And if you were at the agency at the time, it just seemed natural to ask. Well, no, I, I, it's, I completely understand the question, and in your place I'd ask it too. But in my place, I have to give you a no comment, unfortunately. All right. I understand that. And I respect that because of national secrets, et cetera. Uh, and let's move on to your book. Um, okay. T tell me uh, what, uh, what it is that we can uh, do in terms of long-term success. What do you mean long fuse big bang? Well, what I mean is, in your own personal or professional life, how do you hit a grand slam home run versus a single? Or just go to the plate and avoid being hit by a pitch, if you will. Um, most of us go through each day playing whack-a-mole or putting out fires, and we have this nagging sense that we never get to the important stuff because we're so consumed with the urgent stuff. And in the book, as a brain scientist, I point out that the perception that everything in our day is an emergency is an illusion that your brain foists on you because of scripts that are wired into it through evolution. Specifically, when your brain finished evolving about 50,000 years ago, it was in a time when life expectancy was about 20 years, and it was incredibly risky. You could be eaten, you could starve to death, all kinds of bad things could happen. And so you tend to focus on the here and now because tomorrow or the day after tomorrow really didn't matter. If you didn't get through today, forget it. So your brain automatically biases you to have what we call as neuroscientists temporal myopia, which means that you only look at things in the very near term. And what happens is your brain is kind of like a Microsoft Word computer program when you open it up after you buy it. It has a lot of defaults that are set there, a certain font, a certain margin spacing, and so forth. And if you didn't know better, you'd think that that's all the Word program would ever let you do, just what's by default. It's only when you learn that, no, you can go in and change all that and you don't have to do what Microsoft thinks is a good idea, but what you think is a good idea, you can actually start writing your own script. So, and that's what I point out in my book, is to understand that actually, no, your brain has these defaults. It just doesn't tell you that. And it also doesn't tell you that you can change them. Dr. Azeltine, I, I read what you wrote in, in that regard, but I was curious about specifics, right? So what, what is my brain programmed to do uh, that you think it skips over that's critical, that it shouldn't skip over? Uh, yeah. and, and, and what do you mean reprogram it for what? You, you see well, what I'm saying? Let's put some yeah, bone I got it. meat so on those If bones. you look at um, how do you find big opportunities to go hit a home run instead of a single, you look in your blind spots that your brain by default blinds you to. And it blinds you to them not because it's malicious, but because normally it focuses you on what matters so that you don't get distracted by what doesn't matter. And so it does three things. It filters that information that it doesn't expect. So your brain sees what it expects to see and doesn't see what it doesn't expect to see. And all these optical illusions that you've probably seen in magazines or in a psychology class, like Paris in the, the spring, where your brain doesn't see the second the because it didn't expect there to be one there, mm -hmm. is an example. The second thing your brain does is that it filters out information it doesn't want to see. Right. And the reasons it does that are a little complicated, but it all boils down to Bad information is usually bad because you've got to get up and do something different and move out of a comfort zone. But above all, you have to expend calories. 
And your brain wants you to be very careful at how you shepherd your calories because, again, 50,000 years ago when it evolved to its present form, we were all on a subsistence diet and always in uh, danger of starving to death. So your brain unconsciously, by default, does all kinds of things to keep you from expending unnecessary energy, worrying about things and acting on things that may never happen. So I, I understand those examples. Those are good examples of things that your brain skips over or makes assumptions on or that it's wired wrong because it's wired for another era. That, that makes perfect sense to me. How does, because I know you're trying to lead towards long-term success here if you do the right things. So how, do, how does finding that out help you to get to long-term success? Well, uh, I ask my consulting clients three questions before I go and work with their executive teams. Write down what you don't expect to happen that would be a game changer if it did in your world what you don't want to happen that would be a game changer if it did, and what's a blip on your horizon right now that, you know, is kind of out there and low probability, but if it loomed large, it would completely change your world. Something you're not focusing on now because it's too distant, but it could be important in the future. For example, if you were a slide rule company, you saw this thing out there called the desktop calculator. <clears throat> and it wasn't a big deal right now, but man, could be if it got cheap enough. So... <clears throat> What I do is I ask them, and so, for example, I had a consulting client who was a packaged fish company, and they said the, the thing they didn't want to happen was for seafood consumption in China to go up. And I go, well, why? And they said, well, because they don't buy prepackaged fish in China, and it would drive up the commodity cost of fish. So no upside, all downside, it would be a disaster. And I said, well, let's pause there a moment, and I want you to start at the end and assume that you made a lot of money from seafood consumption in China going up. What would have to be true, and what would you have to do to get there? And they looked at each other and scratched their head, and five minutes later, there was this huge excitement and buzz because it hit them that they were looking at it the wrong way. Um, you know, Wayne Gretzky said he didn't skate to the puck, but skated to where the puck was going to be. And they thought, in China, there's a lot of two-earner families. The extended family is breaking up, so grandma's not there to cook dinner. And packaged food might be a big deal if they partnered with the right person. So they went off just as a result of that one question, and they're starting a whole new initiative to look at that question. All right. That's um, very interesting. Uh, unfortunately, we're out of time now, but uh, Dr. Hazeltine's book is Long Fuse, Big Bang, Achieving Long-Term Success Through Daily Victories. Thank you for uh, joining us, Dr. Hazeltine. We appreciate it. Great. Great to be here. Thank you. All right. Young Turks.